I'll let Jerry introduce herself. Uh, she actually comes from a very rich background in AR and VR and worked at Valve and hardware and done a, a lot of great things, but I won't do her justice. So let's hear from Jerry and the floor is yours. Well, thanks. Uh, this is uh, going to be very experimental tonight. I'm uh, trying some different stuff and some different uh, content and it's uh, very much my opinions and uh, probably half-baked, so I apologize. Uh, feel free to boo me along the way if you want. It's, it's fine. Um, yeah, I have had a, quite a bit of uh, background in uh, VR, AR, MR, XR. Actually, on this particular slide, I uh, changed it about five times trying to figure out like what uh, um, acronym to use. So. Um, First, I'm going to you know, just tell you a bit about myself, and then I'm going to talk about um, some theories I have around the hype cycle that um, was present around AR and VR and how that kind of plays going forward. And then I'll tell you a little bit about what we're doing at Till 5. So I'm an inventor, a bit of a pyro, uh, mad scientist, always been into engineering. Um, came to Silicon Valley maybe 15 years ago and got involved with doing all kinds of um, different engineering work. Um, so things from uh, low Earth orbit rockets, did some telemetry and flight systems for those. Um, I did some toys. I did uh, video compression devices that you could stream video to the web when um, that was a difficult thing to do. Uh, worked on telepresence robots before they were the cool thing to do. and. And I've been very fortunate that I was able to um, experience different sides of um, development when things were hot and when things weren't. And uh, what's interesting, and I think I'm going to try to see if I can convey this tonight, is I think a lot of the innovation comes when things aren't the um, most ideal for startups and people that can push through those tough times um, actually produce better um, products in the end. Um, I absolutely love the um, Gartner hype cycle um, charts. I mean, th they're nothing more than just scraping a bunch of data from um, what investors are doing and just readily available information. But, you know, the way they work is um, they represent that there's some piece of technology that happens at the beginning of this hump that's been enabled recently. Like for VR, um, it was cell phone screens and um, IMUs to do tracking, and that was just the catalyst to make that happen. And once that catalyst happens, then a lot of people get on the bandwagon, investors start dumping tons of money into it, there's a lot of media, and there's a lot of hype. And so you reach the top of this pinnacle here, and there's just a fever pitch going. And just like, sometimes uh, irrational things happen. And uh, people delude themselves. They think that, you know, this is it. This is like everyone in the world's gonna be walking around with a VR headset. And th those are the kinds of things that we were hearing just a couple of years ago. But then, you know, time passes and reality sets in, and then you start going down this back slope here. And uh, like, okay, my father's not adopting this. You know, people are <laughs> like, you know, thing, the reality sinks in, and then you get into this trough of disillusionment, which is kind of interesting. And uh, um, this is where I think um, innovation actually starts to happen. So you end up in this kind of like uh, low point where um, things are difficult, and you really have to be a scrappy startup or a scrappy innovation lab, like Samsung Innovation Labs, probably gonna have to be a little more scrappy now that the hype is um, over on VR and AR. And then there's the slope of enlightenment and then the productivity. This is the undetermined amount of time where all the baby steps actually happen and the really cool innovation happens and the adoption of the technology. Um, these, these charts, I look at them all the time and they predict nothing. Like you cannot predict, you know, if someone's going up this upward slope, you can't predict whether they're gonna be successful or not. And uh, what's interesting is I think a lot of the VC funding or VC companies out there get on, jump on the bandwagon on this upward slope. And um, sometimes they have huge hits, huge exits, and that just feeds this, this cycle. You know, and sometimes you end up with something that really works at the top of it too. But oftentimes I think a lot of technologies when they're brand new, you're gonna do that backward slide. 
Um, so my background for XR, MR, AR um, research, um, after doing uh, all kinds of engineering, um, Valve software um, stalked me all over Silicon Valley and stalked me all over the countryside and wanted me to come up to their R&D lab that they were putting together in Bellevue, Washington. And so they hired me on to build their dream team. And I was given the mission of taking the Valve software Steam platform and bringing that to the entire family. And so I was given this mandate. I put together this really awesome dream team, recruited tons of people, and put this innovation lab together where we started researching everything. We were trying to read pre people's minds with electrodes. We were trying to do eye tracking to see engagement in games and where people were looking. We were doing AR and VR. And what was really cool there is I had pretty much an unlimited budget and like the world's smartest people that I could find. And I got a glimpse of what's going to be happening in the next 20 years. We just brute forced everything. Money was no object. And that's how I got really excited about augmented reality. Um, I, I threw uh, this picture into the right. You can see there's a, a yard uh, garden gnome on there. This is one of my favorite pictures from the Valve um, R&D de &D departments. Uh, that's a military head mount display, but we had so many sensors sitting on the, the front of this headset that we put the garden gnome on the back to balance it out. Ah. <laughs> and, and uh, uh, well, the software people didn't like me for doing that. Um, <laughs> um, so uh, I, I like to rock the boat there, and uh, I, was, I made some predictions there. I thought that virtual reality actually comes after augmented reality, and that was my stance, and I just pushed that as my agenda. I'm like, you know, once AR headsets can do everything that VR can do, you've, you've won, because you've had this really gentle experience that even my father could use, and you've trained all the end users, and they're going to get into deeper and deeper experiences until they're doing full VR. So in a lot of ways, like in, over these years, when we keep seeing VR pop in, I think it's the cart before the horse. We actually have to nail everything for AR before we're going to get mass adoption into VR. So rock the boat too much, and so they cut the entire AR team. <laughs> yep, it happens sometimes. And uh, so, you know, this was um, right when Oculus and a bunch of the VR companies just were at a fever pitch with their hype. And so I went to Gabe Newell, the founder of the company, and I said, like, you know that AR stuff that you don't think you want? Like, sell it to me. Let me go off on my own. So a group of us got together, and we handshake and a few hundred dollars, we just got all the rights to use this AR stuff that we were developing. And we started a company. And uh, uh, it was a great time to raise money. Like, you could say almost anything and raise money for AR and VR. We did a Kickstarter and raised a million dollars. We got a million and a half in seed funding. We got $15 million, you know, Series A. And, uh, well, um, the sales were supposed to do this kind of thing, up and to the right, as our CEO used to say all the time. Um, we shipped our first product. People liked it. Um, these were some developer units, but we'd, um, we'd missed. We didn't have the full formula there. And so, um, so <laughs> uh. <laughs> You know, you know, sometimes like products are just magic. You just can't, like, I wish I had a crystal ball. And like, you know, we were telling all our investors, like, yeah, this thing's going to like be the next pet rock. It's going to take off like crazy. Well, it's more like we just laid a hard egg and it didn't quite work out. And, and we were now on that downward slope of the uh, uh, hype cycle. And sales across the board for AR, VR were pretty flat. And so we're now in a, an interesting um, funding environment where it was difficult to, to raise money. And, uh, you know, hype is bottoming out and uh, you have to have real business plans and real strong plans to move forward. And so, um, ironically, this is exactly what our bottom line looked like in the last days as the death throes of uh, my company went crashing into the, the ground as we couldn't raise money. It was, it was really unfortunate. Um, so here's some of my theories on some prerequisites for AR and VR to work. Like, there's no silver bullet out there. There's been this idea that the next pair of glasses coming out by XYZ company is going to be the silver bullet. And that's not going to happen. There's too much to be done. So 
Um, any company involved with AR, VR is going to have to find a useful vertical market to make your first baby step. And there's going to be a lot of these vertical markets. And we're going to have to start working towards an acceptable form factor for those, um, those vertical markets. You know, lawn gnomes are not acceptable for most vertical markets. Some, probably. I don't know which ones. But um, so that's got to be worked on as well. And probably one of more of the more difficult, and this is where it's going to take the time aspect of this, is the end user acceptance. It's like, how do I like, train my father to use an AR experience? How do I get him to take that first baby step? And, um, and it's going to be baby steps. There's just no silver bullets out there. Like, trust me, like, there's just nothing going to be coming that's going to be you know, so good that everyone quits computing you know, on their phones or their computers and just switches tomorrow to um, some near eye display or some crazy contact lens. Um, at Valve Software, I had this poster on the wall. You can't see it, it's really difficult to see, but this is the evolution of input devices for video game consoles. And I love this so much because it's this mass of things that were imagined, and then they evolved, and then some died off, and then some continued on, and some evolved, and it just keeps going and going until now we're like, we have some pretty good input devices. And I like to show this um, controller to the right that was a video game controller in the early days. I mean, it has a, uh, a knob for English. Like, yeah, I mean, it's a, the path there is not clear, and for the path for AR and VR is not clear, and we're going to make some really, like, crazy stuff, and we're going to make a lot of mistakes along the way. I mean, some vertical market, that's probably great, right? And we're going to have some of those uh, pet rock things. I mean, you look at uh, phone evolution, it's the same thing. Like, we, we take for granted, like, one day we almost woke up and there was um, this really great um, phone in our, our pocket. But there was a lot of evolution along the way. They started out in 1973 as these huge brick things by Motorola or someone. And, you know, Motorola is this huge company. that They should be able to dominate the entire time. No, there was tons of evolution. Nokia came and went. And there were a lot of like crazy evolutions of the cell phone too, like this thing to the, the right. It's like, you know, today we laugh at it, but at one point it's like we're trying to figure out the path forward. And our AR, VR, we're going to be doing those same things, like our user interfaces are going to be constantly changing. And so, you know, today we have a lot of really cool tech out there, and it's, you know, it's like upper left, there's like these displays that look like pretty fashionable glasses. They're really sexy. I love them, but they don't do much. So the vertical markets that they can live in is very narrow. Um, that's going to be a baby step forward. And then you start moving a little bit bigger glasses. They can do a little bit more, and they have maybe a little bit more display they can do. And that's going to be some other nichier. And then it just gets bigger and bigger, and they do more. And um, But we got to push it all sides. It's like a balloon. You push it, and it's going to you know, squish out somewhere. Um, but uh, these things are going to be solved at one point. I, I love the uh, leap motion uh, glasses at the bottom. Uh, like, I tried that demo not too many weeks ago. It's fantastic. It's like it really shows off their hand tracking. It's like, oh, the future is going to be great. But this is kind of more a, like, this is great for like a space film, you know, that, that vertical market. Um, so I only had a few minutes to talk. Um, I have lots of crazy ideas. I'd love to talk with you guys afterwards. Um, at Tilt 5, um, Cast AR um, crashed and burned, but we were fortunate enough to pull some of the core team together, and uh, now we found our niche that we're going after, and the pie is really big. And we're going to take a sliver of it, and we're going to make billions out of that sliver, but um, I'm not ready to release what we're doing yet. Um, but you know, after we're done, I'd love to talk to you about uh, my crazy ideas on where AR is going in the next n number of years, undefined. <laughs> <laughs>